Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Aussie Lawn. Uh, we had another cold one here this morning, uh, probably the coldest one so far this year. Got down to minus 1.8, and in the shady areas, uh, there's still, I'm just looking there now, there's still a little bit of frost uh, sitting around. So, good frost this morning, uh, but again, it's going to lead to a perfect day. Uh, although we're now in the depths of winter and we're starting to, you know, from here on in, the days will slowly get longer and and over time the days will get warmer. It's time to start thinking about treating bindies. Now, obviously we just use the word bindies because that's what people think of when they get stuck in their feet, but also things like clover, um, your broadleaf weeds, your burmatics, uh, and that sort of thing. So collectively just call it bindy control. And uh, yeah, it's time to start thinking about that. Now I have actually treated this yard about a week ago with uh, bindi, some bindi killer. I used broadside, uh, but I also show you in a minute. I did something a little bit different when I was shopping the other day. Staring in the garden section at Woolworths was a bottle of weed and feed, the hose on stuff, and it was screaming at me to buy me, buy me. I'd never used it before, and I just wanted to see how much of a result do you get from a twelve-dollar bottle. Of weed and feed from Woolworth, so I'll have a look. We'll have a look at that. I'll show you how that's turned out. But without further ado, let's kick on this episode. Right. So, what are some of the uh, what are some of the tips I can give you guys for successful control of these uh, bindies and stuff like that? Number one would have to be uh, you've got to apply. You've got to spray this stuff before the bindi has a chance to set seed. Otherwise, uh, once it does that, the seed is actually the spiky bit. So it's the the whole I guess genetics behind it is it sticks to the animal, the person or whatever gets carried along and it drops off another area and it reproduces and it rolls around again. So got to spray this stuff before it has a chance to set seed. Now I've actually noticed here there's a couple of odd plants here that have actually started to develop a seed head. That's why I've started to hit this probably a little bit earlier than I have in the past. Uh, number two, always apply any herbicide to actively growing plants be that um, your bindies and stuff. So this year we're fortunate enough to have a higher soil moisture content so the weeds are able to actively grow. Now you don't want to apply this stuff um, in times of stress to the plant. Obviously this morning we had a frost uh, but a week ago that uh, when I sprayed this everything was fine and I would suggest that if you had a frost this morning I wouldn't spray this day. I might spray late in the afternoon or perhaps the next day if there's going to be no frost. So look for things like little windows of opportunity like that. That's what you need to be looking for. Now, let's just have a little look around here at how the uh, results have gone so far from what I've sprayed. And then we'll have a look at the um, weed and feed, the hose on weed and feed area that I, I marked out. And then we'll have a look at uh, some what to look for in a sprayer. If you're going to be buying a sprayer, what do we look for? The different nozzles and stuff like that for different jobs. The right. first plants that always show a reaction to any of these broadleaf herbicides, bindi killers, etc., would have to be your broadleaf things. This here is uh, Cape Way down. This is, uh, you look around and there's a bit of it around. And it pretty much starts to curl up with the broadside. Can, uh, herbicide that I use, the broadside, it starts to curl up within an hour or so of application. Uh, and then we look over here, got some, uh, people would think this is clover, but it's not. This is Burmetic. It's actually a medic. Um, and again, it, it reacts favorably to the, uh, to the chemical as well really quickly. So here we've got a little patch of bindi. Again, uh, really showing signs of control, which is great. Uh, so I've got quite a, an array of weeds here. That's really, that's great. <laughs> Not. Uh, so yeah, but that it's a really good broad spectrum sort of thing. It, it, it really does take care of of uh, everything that's there in the way of broadleaf. It doesn't take care of grassy weeds, just takes care of the broadleaf stuff. And when I come over here to this new garden, which should be starting very soon, uh, it's really been hit hard by that stuff. And also the oxalis that was here, so it's really uh, it's really taken the the effect. So that that broadside really really does pack a punch. Right, so I don't need to convince you anymore that the broadside does its job and it does it very well and very efficiently. 
But what about the weed and feed? Now, what I did was I marked out, so the bottle says it covers 137 square meters. So I marked out approximately 130 square meters. I put four stones in the corners and basically just sprayed that packet out until it was empty and cool to the day. Now, sprayed that on the same day that I sprayed the, uh, the broadside with the backpack sprayer. But what sort of results did we get from the weed and feed? Let's, let's have a look now and see. Start off with some cape weed again. Now look, I'm not going to lie, it's, it's done something. The plant is not happy, but it's certainly not as uh, unhappy as the uh, as its cousin down the down the back of the, down the front of the yard there a little bit more. Um, we come up here and there's some more burr medic. There's some more medic here, and look, it's laying over. It is laying over. It's oh no, it's not. I thought it might have started to put its little seedy things out. Um, look, it's it's curled its toes up a little bit, so. I think it's going to take longer to work than the other stuff, but anyway, let's keep going and see what we can find. I'm looking for bindies now. Oh, here we go. Um, yeah, they look a bit sick. Look, the, the results aren't as visual. There's yeah, another broadleaf turned its toes up. Um, the results aren't as visual, I guess, but they're there. Um, if you're doing a large area, I don't think it's very cost effective, but if you just have a small backyard or you don't want to spend a lot of money setting up to spray weeds, look, it might be an option. Um, I don't see any greenness. I don't see any of the feeding component of the weed and feed happening. Um, so there's a there's a little rock there. Then obviously the edge, ooh, where am I? The edge there somewhere. Um, the fence I called one and that corner over there. So this is the this is the area. But look, it's done it's done something, but it hasn't um, it's not out, it's not outstanding, but I suppose it's sort of a bit foolproof too. If you're not confident to use chemicals and get mixes right, this probably does give you a foolproof reasonable reasonable cover for a small one-off hit, I reckon. Well, right, when you get the opportunity, get out there and have a look in your own yard and just sort of get have a little look see get down there and see if you can see any bindi starting to form because as i said it's time to start thinking about it so some of the more available chemicals that you're going to find the problem with the broadside is for the average homeowner the smallest container you can get it in is a 20 liter drum that's all right for me on a bigger block here but if you're in town it's just too much you're never going to use it and it's just not cost effective so some of the options you've got obviously if you're running buffalo, you're going to use something like bow and arrow. It's safe for buffalo or one of the commercial Yates buffalo pro kind of uh, control methods. Um, if you're on Cooch, Kai Q, you sort of thing, you can use your Camba M is an option. Um, broadside, if you really want to go that way, broadside will be fine. You can use bow and arrow. Look, there's a heap of different ones out there. There's an absolute heap, plus the ones that you can find at Bunnings. Um, you may need two applications just because you're not not all the bindies are going to come up at the same time so just keep an eye over over the next two or three weeks because you may need a second application but anyway let's move on to these sprays and we'll have a look at um, the three sprayers that I've got and the differences between between what they are right so these are the the three different sprayers that I've got and they're all sort of got their sort of pros and cons and and different uses this little fella here um, these little garden sprays, they've got a um, an adjustable circular nozzle, like a cone sort of spray. These these ones here, in my opinion, they're not really suitable for spraying out weed, uh, blanket spraying weed. So if you want to spot spray weeds in the lawn, perfect. Um, running along fence lines, fantastic. Uh, if you if you're one of these people that edge, do your edges with Roundup, you could use this not a cool idea but anyway that might be your thing um, so positives to this great for sort of spot spraying a shrub so you might want to spray a shrub or something in, just something individual um, but again negatives not perfect for um, not perfect for blanket spraying doesn't matter which spray you've got always triple rinse flush out flush the line out after each use just standard practice keeps these things in great shape keeps them working for many years and why should you have to buy something again just because you didn't look after it properly in the first place um, so that's that one number two 
is this Hardy branded sprayer. Now, I've had this one for about 15 years. Hardy's a very big name in agriculture. It's a Danish company. This this actual unit was made in, in Denmark and it has been a cracking good spray unit. Um, this one came with interchangeable nozzles. This one's got the flat fan. Um, perfect, perfect eight litre sprayer for doing uh, yeah, spraying lawns. I used to use this for iron applications, liquid fertilizer applications. This was my this was my workhorse sprayer uh, until I upgraded to the Solo here. Now, I honestly can't say I've got too many negative things to say about this. Only positives. It's just been a cracking good sprayer. It's obviously not the cheapest sprayer on the market, and I'm not exactly sure if they make these smaller ones anymore. You have to check the website, but. Um, Highly recommend the Hardy product. It's it's been it's been great. Now over to the new kit on the block. Everyone's talking backpack sprayers right now, and this one is obviously the battery one. You can get a hand pump edition as well, and I also purchased the uh, boom spray. So um, two flat fan nozzles cuts the spray time down remarkably. A um, couple of great features. There's no priming with this thing no pumping sorry um, just squeeze the trigger and off she goes couple of downsides though that I've noticed these will lose prime when the when the level of water or spray gets too low so I've, I've had to sort of drop it off the shoulder just to keep the uh, keep the thing in prime another couple of things that's happened with this one um, these straps have got a little spring loaded clip that hooks on uh, to there both the springs have gone, and it's a bit of a pain. So I'm going to have to um, have to probably put a bit of tape or something around them because they keep on unclipping when you're trying to get it on your back. That's a pain in the bum. And I've noticed the stitching on the pads um, is starting to come undone. So that's look, that's not ideal for a big dollar sprayer. But as far as how it performs, it's been fine, providing you know those things. Now I'll give you a quick demonstration of the three and um, show you what I'm talking about. The benefits of the benefits of each and why some aren't suitable to do some jobs and others are. Right, well let's just pretend for a minute that this bit of concrete between the two lines here, let's just pretend this is our area we're going to spray. Um, we'll start with this little fella and I'll point out what this one's actually good for and what it's not so good for. Perfect going along fences and buildings but when it comes to blanket spraying it's okay but not wonderful right and now we'll compare that one with the hardy which has got the flat fan nozzle which is the ideal nozzle for spraying your lawn Straight away, you can see the job's a lot quicker and a lot more even coverage, so perfect sprayer. And finally, we've got the, well, German company solo, Chinese manufactured battery backpack sprayer. It's on the side there, it's got the two speed pump, high and low. Uh, I just run it on the high speed when I've got the uh, boom attachment. But anyway, we'll give this one a run and you'll see again how much faster it is with a, flat, with a double flat fan nozzle. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of the Aussie Lawn. If you've only just discovered the channel, please like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Uh, we're going to get into some more interesting times. Spring is just around the corner, so it's going to be the renovation series in the not-too-distant future, some turfing stuff. So heaps of more content coming. Uh, if you liked what was here, give it a thumbs up, and we will see you next time here on the Aussie Lawn.